system in one day, and yet they're trying to state that it wasn't my story that did it? <laughs> it was the only thing they talked about. And they went so far, Alex, is doing this. If you typed in Jesse Ventura or Ventura on the internet, it would automatically take you to the Chris Kyle lie. It was premeditated. I mean, we could see the crafting of it. And I just, it, it, I'm not scared of them killing me even or putting me in prison, but I'm scared of them destroying my name and my family being embarrassed if they just make crap up. It's just incredible what they do. Yeah, it, it really is. They, you know, and like I said, that's why, uh, and, and the update on it is we've got uh, oral arguments in the Eighth Circuit Court of Appeals on October the 20th, Tuesday. And then it should be shortly thereafter that they will rule one way or the other. But oral arguments are October 20th in the Eighth Circuit Court of Appeals in St. Paul. Well, this will change. I know your lawyers told you this, but I've seen it in the news. This will change defamation law, and the court will be going against all previous precedent, going back to English common law, uh, if they say you're allowed to be unrichly, uh, uh, unjustly enriched. I would think so. I mean, it's, they're asking for a law to be gotten rid of. They're asking the Eighth Circuit Court of Appeals to change the law that is out there. And we feel confident. My, my attorneys are very good. They're not big name attorneys, as you'd call them, but they're very, very good. And uh, like they've told me, we've met every constitutional requirement for unjust enrichment. It's already been Stay ruled. there, stay there. So if you don't win, we know the fix is in. Absolutely. It's a slam dunk. We'll be back. Infowars.com, ladies and gentlemen. PrisonPlanet.tv. We're going back to Jesse Ventura to take your phone calls. Get into, I'm going to let him cover what he, I'm sure he's got a bunch of stuff he wants to talk about. I've been asking questions so far. The new book, American Conspiracies, uh, goes back on sale. It's been updated. We're going to talk about the updates and why it's such a good book to wake up friends and family here in just a moment, put out by Skyhorse Publishing. But <clears throat> before I do that, we are not like MSNBC that got over, well, their parent company, $5 billion in bailout stimulus money, and then over a billion went to their news divisions, NBC and MSNBC. We don't get taxpayer money. We, we don't get $450 million a year like NPR, who still begs for money on top of it. And it's funded by the Rockefeller Foundation for the Gap. We are funded by our sponsors and by the products we sell, mainly by the products we sell. PrisonPlanet.tv nightly news subscriptions. 20 people can use each subscription. $5.95 a month. Uh, the nutraceuticals and InfoWarsLife.com. Uh, the water filtration systems. We've got 10% off and free shipping on the ProPure G2 systems to cut out the glyphosates the fluoride, and hundreds of other toxins or reduce them down to non-detectable or close to non-detectable levels. Some of the stuff, a tiny bit, still gets through. Uh, you got to, like, do reverse osmosis to cut out almost everything, and then that cuts out the good minerals. But I choose to use gravity-fed systems. This is the best, and it's very affordable. Blows away the competition. Uh, we have 20% off Prostagard. We have 20% off uh, Secret 12, Vitamin B12 formula. We have a lot of big specials right now at InfoWarsLife.com or InfoWarsStore.com is the big umbrella site. We have the Hillary for Prison shirts. Uh, we have all of it. The Liver Shield is back in uh, and much more. And finally, high-quality storable foods are just a good insurance policy. And with InfoWars Select, powered by Mad Patriot Supply, by private labeling, we're able to offer even better deals than they can offer. We sell My Patriot right beside their very same products labeled by us. Uh, it's just a contractual issue. Free shipping and 10% off until next week. And you cannot get a better deal from our research. Uh, we try to bring you the highest quality at the lowest price, fresh produced right here in America, packaged in America, everything right here in America, right here in the United States. InfoWarsStore.com, InfoWarsSelect.com will take you right there to the subpage, or InfoWarsLife.com for the nutraceuticals. And it is your support that makes it all possible. So I want to salute you and thank you all for your support and for spreading the word about the broadcast. They have tried to delist us more on Google. Alexa's derated us and cut our ratings by half, along with every other Libertarian Patriot site in the last year. They're doing a lot to try to suppress us. Facebook is, is, is blocking a lot of our big shares now. Uh, Zuckerberg admits they're doing that, not just to us, but media that isn't in line with the, with the administration's agenda. And, and that leads me now to get into, into the book with Jesse Ventura. I hated Bush. I made films about government involvement in 9-11. Now we've been vindicated. That's come out, the 28 pages. Bare minimum, Saudi Arabia quarterbacking, the U.S. standing down. I've had congressmen on that have seen it. 
Walter Jones, it's bombshell. So we've been vindicated. Uh, and the Democrats are involved as well. But with Obama, there's this left cover. So Libya, Syria, uh, the attacks on free speech, the, the regulations, the arresting record amounts of whistleblowers and journalists. I've had Jonathan Turley on, big liberal, top constitutional lawyer. He says Obama is basically three times worse than Bush. I mean, the, the, the NDAA, all of it. I, I mean, it is so bad. Did he launch a big giant whopper like Iraq? No. So Bush is worse when it comes to overall death, but he did accelerate Afghanistan. So I'm ranting, Governor Ventura. What is your take on the legacy of Obama? And I know you don't like either party, but man, I tell you, I, I mean, we need to, he's the guy in power right now. He, he needs to have somebody put the brakes on him. What is your view on Obama, the legacy, the election, all of it? Well, first of all, um, the election, I'd like to state that I, I wish we would pass a law in the United States that you're not even allowed to form a campaign committee until the year the election is actually going to take place. In other words, you can't start running for 2016 until the year 2016. Because the way it looks right now, whoever the new president who takes office in January of 2017 I imagine the uh, election will start at that point for whoever going to run in 2020. Sure, it's like Christmas ends the 26th, and then Chris, and then the countdown to Christmas and Santa Claus and all the stuff just stays out all year long. Yeah, it just begins and the advertising continues all the way till the next election. Obama, he's been a a, a, gr a great disappointment from what he ran on. You know, he ran that he was going to end the wars. Well, clearly the wars aren't ended. We're neck deep in them, as deep as we've just about ever been, and on more fronts than we've just about ever been. He said that he'd close Gitmo. Well, that hasn't happened either. Uh, he seems to be accomplishing most of what he wants to do since he's become a lame duck. And I find that quite astounding at how he's able to do things now that he couldn't do uh, when he was up for election and now he can't get elected again because he's in his second term. And as you know, our constitution doesn't allow the president to serve more than two terms. But I think the main thing I draw from Obama is this, is the fact that whether it's a Republican or whether it's a Democrat, it makes no difference. That's the big key, I think, that people need to wake up to, that with these two parties, it does not make any difference which one gets elected. The same foreign policy will be carried out and probably this pretty much the same domestic policy will be carried out regardless. Sure. Well, Obamacare was written by Nelson Rockefeller in the 50s. Uh, the Republican Party got it in in, in in Massachusetts, as you know. It is a screw job for the insurance companies uh, to increase prices, ration care, but sold as liberal people went for it. Well, if we put up with that screw job, Jesse, uh, Governor Ventura joining us, then the sky's the limit. I mean, now in Europe, they're talking about bail-ins uh, where, where they're going to just take money out of your bank account directly to the banks to pay off national debt. So isn't that direct corporate fascism, world government, where banks well, just... Uh, yeah, I would tell you that... Uh I, uh, Mussolini, I think, would be extremely proud of the United States today and the direction we're going. <laughs> in, in your gut, do you think humanity will survive another 100 years? I'd like to believe so. I really would. I'd like to believe that, uh, you know, because there's always been times in history where people f probably felt the world was going to hell in a handbasket. But we've always managed to prevail, the human spirit. And I still want to believe the human spirit will prevail even through this mess we're in right now. But the only way that's going to happen, in my opinion, is we need a revolution in this country. And when I say revolution, it doesn't necessarily have to be a violent one, although it could lead to that. You never know. But we certainly need a revolution at the ballot box. We have to stop electing these same people to the same jobs. And that's where I cheer about Donald Trump. That's where I cheer about Bernie Sanders, because they're stirring it up and they're helping to destroy the two-party monopoly, the two-party dictatorship that runs this country. Doesn't it show the arrogance of the political establishment that they would try to foist Jeb Bush 
and Hillary Clinton to quote Drudge, you know, basically two brains in a jar. I mean, these political corrupt dynasties, what a joke. Well, the whole thing is they're all part of the same power team. They're all part of the same faction that's had the power. I mean, face it, these parties have been really unchallenged other than when Perot came up a little bit in 1990 and scared them. And they then they sent Pat Buchanan and his legions into the Reform Party and destroyed our party. Well, now they're getting a taste of their own medicine. Remember, Donald Trump was with us at the Reform Party back then. Maybe Donald's just giving them, giving them a taste of their own medicine. Well, I know you're friends with Donald Trump, so let me ask you this question. You've known him for 20 plus years. Do you think he's for real or is this a publicity stunt? Oh, it's for real now. I thought at first it might be a publicity stunt initially because Donald has always uh, threatened to run. And then when push came to shove, he didn't do it. But for him to do what he's done within the Republican Party. He's all in. He's all in now. He, and, and he's all in because his poll numbers are allowing him to stay in. As he stated, if his poll numbers drop to single digits, Donald's smart enough to get out. That would be the writing on the wall for you. Well, the people aren't buying my program. But as long as Trump remains the leader or up close to being the leader, I think he's in for the long haul now. But will he get by the convention? Personally, I think it ends at the Republican convention, no matter what he does, as will the same will happen to Bernie Sanders. You know, the Washington Post came out with a big article comparing Trump to me, what I did in Minnesota, what Trump's doing now. But they forgot to compare me to Bernie Sanders, too, because what's happening to Bernie is identical to what happened to me. The, the media ignores Bernie, but everywhere he goes, there's 20 to 25,000 people there to sure. hear him. My and problem with Sanders is... Well, that's the way it was for me, Alex. And I'm not saying Bernie's the answer, but I'm just saying that's... No, I get the, it. He's an indicator of, of people are upset. No, I totally get what you're saying. Here's he my problem. Up. He's anti-gun. I mean, could you talk to Bernie or somebody and say, look, good guys with guns aren't the problem. We don't need to ban semi-autos. We'll work on Bernie. We'll work on him. You know, remember this. We still have the Second Amendment. Until they repeal the Second Amendment, we can keep our guns. But they are trying to get them. Are you concerned if they really try to ban guns that can start a civil war? Well, here, here's what I'm concerned about more than that. I'm concerned about the hypocrisy of it, Alex. They're out there talking about these school shootings. They're out there talking about all the bad things that happen with guns, and certainly there are. No one can deny that. Humans misuse guns. It's a known fact we do it. But here's where I come from. When they come to me and tell me they're going to take my gun away, I think it's hypocrisy when the United States of America, the government itself, is the biggest arms dealer in the world. Of course. What is the difference if a child gets killed overseas or one gets killed in America? Is there a value difference between those two children? Not to me, there isn't. A child is a child no matter where they're at. And our weapons are killing people that we sell internationally to all these thugs and governments and what have you throughout the world. So let the U.S. government lead the way. When they come to me and say, Jesse Ventura, we've stopped selling guns throughout the whole world now. At that point in time, maybe I might listen a little. But until that happens, Jesse Ventura ain't listening until they not only talk the talk, our government's got to start walking the walk on guns. Bravo to that. And that's exactly what Ice Cube said and got demonized a few years ago. He said, I tell you what, when the government turns theirs in, I'll turn mine in. When all these rich people with their bodyguards, I couldn't believe it. It was an AP, AFP everywhere criticized Donald Trump this weekend when, he, when they found out he had a concealed permit for 20 years. And he said, yeah, I carry a gun sometimes. I, you know, he's got cartels after him. He's rich, a kidnapping target. I mean, what? But, but, but the general public should be able to protect themselves. But the media thinks Donald Trump shouldn't be able to have a gun. I mean, who can have a gun then if he can't? Well, let me give you how bad it was in Minnesota. In Minnesota, conceal and carry. I, I, I helped change the law to where it shall issue if you're qualified. I was the mayor of Brooklyn Park. And I went to my police chief to get concealed and carry, and he turned me down. <laughs> now, you, can you imagine? But I got my revenge on him 
He later was made head of public safety in the state of Minnesota under Arne 